as it is at the other age groups the distances are now equalised between the senior men and women used to be 8,000 metres it's up to 9,000 metres they will cover six big laps none of the complicated shorter laps here and I think Tim it's a it's a sign of how far women's distance running and gender equality has come that back in 1994 29 years ago when Katharina McKiernan of Ireland won the first ever European cross country title the distance was only four and a half thousand metres and now these ladies are running double that was it really? Four and a half, four and a half K. Wow. Jessica jumped there towards the front. And uh, she, of course, a sub two minute, 800 meter runner when she was 17 years old. And she's uh, transformed herself into a brilliant 5,000 and 10,000 meter runner and cross country racer. The Britain, as this field gets underway, they were about 10 minutes late. I'm quite sure where that time was lost. Maybe a slight anomaly in the original timetable that was drawn up but Judd there, the tall figure in gloves second to left with plenty of British vests there great to see Grovdahl up there as well she is super consistent she really is Caroline Björkeli Grovdahl has been here so many times like I said on the start line there going for her 10th individual medal at these championships today across the age group she's been such a star two times a champion um, in 2021 and 2022 in 2015, 16, 17 and 18 she won bronze stepped up to silver in 2019 and obviously as I said those two goals following on can she go for three in a row but right beside her tracking her as she should is Nadia Batacletti Batacletti is really one of the most outstanding European distance runners at the age of 21 two years ago in Tokyo she ran an Italian record to finish seventh in the Olympic 5,000 meter final with a vicious last lap to get up to seventh. She has been indomitable in this sphere. 2018 and 2019, two European under 20 titles. 2021 and 2022, two under 23 titles. She's going for five consecutive victories in a row at the Euro Cross. But that lady there in shot, Caroline Björkley Grovdal, is going for three in a row at senior level. Tim, something has to give. Well, I wonder what we'll give, because both the men's races so far, the individual races, for getting the relay, have been won with sprints, and both women's races have been with runaway winners, massive winning margins. This one looks more competitive, though. I'm not sure anybody's going to dominate this, but I was preparing Grubdal last night. There she is now, right in the centre, the defending champion, looking for a hat-trick, as you said. And she goes back so many years. She's been a great champion in Norwegian colours again and again. Back in 2007... She won the European Junior Steeplechase title and she retained it in 2009. She's been around such a long time and she's a model of consistency. I mean, uh, you know, the, when you think about the almost monastic lifestyle, most of these athletes have to live to reach this level of performance. It's that fantastic focus and continuous application which I admire so much so often. By the way, I'm looking here for a big run from Sarah Lati because uh, there she is in the yellow for Sweden and I uh, commentated on her big win in Tilburg across country in the Netherlands just a couple of weeks back where she was truly dominant and I watched her racing there and I thought she is going to be a real handful come uh, Brussels and it looks like that might be the case there she is in the yellow Sarah Lati, national record holder at half marathon she's got plenty of strength She's accomplished from the track to the road to the cross country. She'll be a formidable contender, a 68 minute half marathon with Sarah Lati. 19th in this race last year, but setting her stall out early. She runs much better than 19th here. Bato Kletti, though, has been a phenomenon. Two European under 20 titles, followed by two European under 23 titles. And she just gets on with it, doesn't she, Bato Kletti? She's a good, consistent business-like athlete doesn't uh, doesn't win the massive races yet on the track and attracts the huge spotlights of media attention that perhaps those races earn through the summer months but my word when it comes to the winter she is uh, formidable and and actually her her track profile is improving all the time as you said you know run well in the olympic games in tokyo yeah she really is she's coached by her father and in the great debate whether it's nurture or nature she's got both on her side because her dad Giuliano was seventh in this race at senior level European cross country back in 1998 he was 17th in the 2001 world cross country he was a 60 minute half marathoner while her mother Johara Sadugi was a 2 all win 900 meter runner so if you ever wondered what you get when you cross a 60 minute half marathon runner with a 2 all win 800 meter runner 
and get Nadia Baticelli there in second place going for the Fab Five straight titles. You know what's interesting about Baticelli is she's on record as saying that for Paris next year, the Olympic Games, she's aiming for the 1500 metres, whereas you'd think she's nailed on as a 5000 metre runner. You know, she's, she's great at 5000, 1441, which is banging on the door of the supreme top levels of world class she's run 403 for 1500 but maybe they've seen something in training that tells them she's got an awful lot of potential to make up at 1500 yeah i was actually at the world road running championships in riga where she finished fifth in the 5000 meters and i actually wrote the article where nadia told me that bit of news she was like i have a bit of news next year i'm going to drop down to 1500 and i asked her her reasoning because it seems strange you know she's a 1500 meter runner with a personal best of 403 but she, puts you 10 seconds behind the medals these days you know as someone who finished seventh at the age of 21 in the 5,000 meters but she said you know the 5,000 meters in terms of the African strength there she just feels like the 1,500 meters is a little more open and that's the reason she's going to drop down next year and perhaps with that seventh place finish maybe she couldn't see that improving too much and she's just taking a chance and going to try the 1,500 meters next year but certainly it's been at the longer distances where we've seen Baticletti at her best. But we were both in Riga and that mile race in, in, in it was weird, wasn't it, with a roundabout that they had to negotiate with about 50 metres to go. And they, they came round it. And all of a sudden, there's 10 blokes facing you with about 60 yards to go. It was the most bizarre uh, racing circumstance I've ever seen in a road mile. But here it is. Great Britain with 11 points. Germany on 29. Italy on 36. So that's a big lead for Great Britain at the moment. But six and a half minutes on the clock. So much can change. Yeah, and just on Batacletti, you know, she really does have a... A tough routine. She's still in her fifth year of studying at the University of Trento, studying engineering and architecture. 8.30 in the morning to 6.30 at night. She's stuck in there. So for any athletes training at an elite level who complain about their routine, it's probably not quite as hard as Nadia Badekletti. So she's often out running at 6 in the morning at 7 o'clock at night. Her father going along with her for so much, but on the bike. And, you know, I asked her about her training, Tim, and it, it's not... You know, a lot of these athletes, like we talked about Christensen, Inga Brixen, La Ross, you, would, you wonder how hard they're training at an early age, but um, Badekledi said, you know, she doesn't really go over 100 kilometers a week. It's not, for the level of performance she's turning in, it's not excessive, I would say. It's, she said normally it's about 80 to 90 kilometers through the year. The most she'd ever hit is 110, which is about 60, 65 miles a week. So I think in the career and the trajectory of this 23-year-old Italian, there's so much scope for improvement. But Gravdal is going to make this a test because she will fear the speed of Baticletti. Gravdal is a good finisher herself, but her strength is her strength. And she will want to make her rivals suffer long before that last lap. Yeah, Gravdal just beginning to wrestle control of this one, isn't she? Nearly eight minutes on the clock. Donnelly is there, Jessica Judd. Is, uh, back in, what, fifth place. Grovdal in charge at the moment. Still that yellow vest of Sarah Lati. They look great in Tilburg. She was 18th at the World Championships in Budapest over 10,000. Only 19th in this race last year, Lati, but she certainly, as you said a few minutes ago, looks like she's up to game as uh, Donnelly goes through wearing 628. Abby Donnelly, ninth last year in this race, second in the UK trials. She's got all the credentials. Great running from Fry too. That's uh, Izzy Fry, third in those UK trials. Another athlete, one of seven, who have either coached by or worked very closely with Chris and Johnny McGeorge up in up in Loughborough. They've got a fabulous squad here. But what do you do when somebody takes control like this and pushes on through the middle stages of a race? Do you, you know, it's not like a track race where you can come around them and slow down and really disrupt their race plan because frankly they've got more space to move around yeah, exactly and i think you know they're not let's be honest in these conditions they're not moving at that great a pace like a speed so the effect of drafting isn't quite as sustained um so there's not as much advantage which favors the front runner as well especially when you're not getting that mud spattered up into your face but badakletti is doing the right thing here just sitting in marking grovdell um, but yeah the brits in firm command of the team race three in the top six right now as we see there fanula mccormack in that green vest of ireland 39 years old, it is seven days since she ran a 226 marathon in Valencia to qualify for her fifth Olympics. No Irish woman ever has made five Olympics in any sport. She will be the first to sue in selection in a clean bill of health next summer. And it's only six months since Fanula McCormack, the two-time former champion, gave birth to her third daughter. 
Well, that's nothing to her. She once finished 18th in the World Cross just six months after giving birth. Good to see Chloe Herbier of Belgium. She was at the press conference. She's up in seventh place at the moment. Won the Belgian Championships last month. She's given good account of herself to 25-year-old. We'll give the crowds around the course something to uh, yell about. Now it does look like your athlete has uh, moved into the fore. And uh, it's certainly good running from Funeral and McCormack. Back in uh, eighth place, seventh place now. I say your athlete. I know you've got a little extra eye on those uh, those green vests. I went to college with her, Tim, so I do suppose have a bit of a bias. <laughs> you have an excuse. Dublin City University, and I can assume you anyone who I can assure you anyone who was at Dublin City University in the mid 2000s looks to Fanula McCormack and the level of work ethic, discipline, and drive she had as the absolute gold standard when it came to distance running and how you should conduct yourself as an athlete. And it's amazing, seven days on from Valencia Marathon, she's working her way up. It looks like she'll soon be up to sixth place. It's ridiculous she doesn't do this a week after a marathon. These shoes have changed the game dramatically, it's got to be said. Izzy Fry going well, Amelia Quirk is up there as well. We saw Burkhardt of Germany looking strong. Now at the moment, just going for Bad Patch Sadalati, they're struggling in the mud there as Grogdal imperceptibly just keeps the pressure on you know and the gaps are open and it's funny isn't it cross country because you don't necessarily look quite as visibly as though you've accelerated because the, 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 the fluctuations the changes in the pace can be very very subtle more so than on the track more so than on the track but Grovdal here is doing some damage and only Batocletti and uh, Donnelly able to go with her she really is you know she grew up she was a Fantastic Nordic combined, I suppose, that like cross country skiing was her bread and butter, much like Dean Brixons as a kid. So, this is not too dissimilar to a bit of cross country skiing, Gravdal, and that's I think why she's been so effective over the cross country, especially when the surface gets like this. She's not gifted with amazing track speed, but she does have very impressive PBs 1431 for 5,000 meters, that was run last year, 3050 for 10,000 meters, that was two years ago, and a 67 minute half marathon recently in Copenhagen. Make no mistake, she is coming into this in flying form. Do you know what? You might be better off in skis on this mud, actually. I, I reckon a little bit more water. We get the old hoses out. Are they approved by World Athletics? Uh, it won't be long now. You look at some of the shoes that we see in races. <laughs> is there any, any rules about length of shoe? Who knows? I didn't spot them if there were. <laughs> Maybe she'll give it a go next year. Abby Donnelly, looking fantastic, though. Great Britain way out in front of the team race. 14 points to 44 for the second place team uh, Germany in Italy in 44 as well but Grovdal beginning to make it count isn't she yeah, there's just that gap opening now to Balakletti and you just get the sense with Grovdal she knows this game so well and there it is you saw that look over her left shoulder that was not at Donnelly that was at Balakletti and that will fill her with confidence she's kind of approaching the halfway point she's on the third of six laps here and I think she is the real athlete, Badikledi, who she will have been afraid of. And look back the field, back into fifth place. Fanula McCormack passing out, it looks like, Izzy Fry up to fifth. Two years ago, she ran a 223 marathon in Valencia. Seven days later, she finished ninth at the Eurocross in Dublin on home turf. So I think a lot of people were looking at this going right. She was a little bit back in Valencia to that, two or three minutes behind her marathon time. If she could make a top ten, this would be brilliant. She's top five. Did we have a conversation where I said, I bet, you, I bet Vanilla makes the top 10? I and can't remember that, went, I, I've got a funny feeling you said, oh, top 15, top 20. <laughs> Ye of little faith. I know you were just being modest, even exactly. though you were, you were sure she could get in the roster. Didn't want to put pressure on. There is a reason, though, in all seriousness, Fanula does not like ever doing interviews before. She says she prefers to go in and let her performances do the talking rather than create expectation. She always talks herself down, but that's kind of the sign of the person she is, as you see. Nadia, Nadia Batikledi there now looks to be really struggling. This mentally is going to be so difficult for Batikledi. She hasn't been in flying form, and you can see there just her stride, you know. Much yeah. like we talked about Niels LaRosse earlier, she is a bit of a Ferrari in terms of her track speed, and when it gets really cut up like this, sometimes athlete strides are just not suited for that sinking feeling your foot gets. Oh, there's the gap. A little bit of a gap there. And Abby Donnelly, ninth last year, super consistent has now just lost a couple of meters on Grovdal, the defending champion, going for a hat trick, and it looks on the cards to me. Grovdal's a lovely smooth looking runner, isn't she? You know, she just gets the job done. As you say, doesn't have fantastic speed, but she's like a, just one of these metronomes, just keeps going, keeps chugging away, battering the opposition down. 
And that gap is growing with every step, and Donnelly certainly had to ease back. Yeah, I think if you're in a race in a European cross country with Gravdell, we've seen for so long, you're going to have to bleed to beat her because she makes you, she takes you to a dark place early in the race. This is not like that men's under 23 race where they were kind of shadow boxing for the first couple of laps. Gravdell is making these women hurt early in this race, knowing how strong she is. And you know, when you get the gap and you, you've been working hard for 10 or 15 minutes to get a gap and you, you glance her over your shoulder at a corner and you see the gap, you get that surge of adrenaline. It's like reinforcement telling you, yep, you've got it, you're there, you're home. Now, not necessarily hanging the gold medal around her neck just yet, but you know what I mean? You get that sort of feeling like, at last, I've broken them. That, that psychological breaking, as well as the physical breaking, is so important. I agree, yeah. and Gravdal, she's been training up in Sierra Nevada recently. I saw she had uh, one of the workouts posted there on her Instagram recently. 2,400s at two, almost 2,500 metres of altitude, so about 8,000 foot. She did 2,400s in 73 seconds off 40 seconds recovery, which was a threshold session, and it was actually her second threshold session of the day. I think this is a copycat game, this distance oh, running sport. Double session jobs. That's where I was going, Tim. I know you'll love it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, much like the Inga Brixons and many others, Norway and other nations copying them around the world double threshold one session in the morning one in the evening has become in vogue in distance running Herbie um, is running out of her skin there in the black headband for Belgium absolutely brilliant stuff from her she's right up there in the top 10 where is she now she's in 7th place her 5,000 best is 1542 she's over a minute slower over 5,000 for example than Grobdal she hasn't come anywhere near breaking 70 minutes for a half marathon she hasn't broken 32 and a half minutes for 10,000 Talk about home advantage. She's running out of her skin, Chloe Herbier, for Belgium. Brilliant to see. We are at the halfway point. And it'll be interesting to check in on some of these splits as the athletes go through because is Gravdell picking it up or is she just maintaining and are they dropping like bowling pins, just been slow roasted by this pace in behind? It'll be interesting to see that, but Gravdell has about a 30 meter advantage right now. Abby Donnelly still going strong in second and Badakhetti credit to her she is holding on also about 30 meters clear of Jess Judd back in third and back in fourth six seconds the gap for Donnelly to Grovdal the Norwegian is building a cushion Batakhetti a long way back Donnelly has been dragged clear from Batakhetti and Warner Judd maybe to a silver medal she just needs to maintain now and, and manage her performance from this point on. I'm sure Grovdal's gap will grow over the opposition. She had, she's got six seconds now. I'll bet you that doubles pretty quickly. But uh, for the rest of them, and in particular, Abby Donnelly, who has uh, been coached so well by Rob Lewis, she has got to just now make sure she gets her effort right through the second half of this race just in terms of those lap splits. The first lap was covered by the leader, Jess Judd, in 5.27. Then it was 5.41 the second lap with Gravdal, Gravdal taking command. Obviously, there's always going to be a slowing, but significantly, I think, 5.33 on that third lap, Gravdal did drop the hammer, and that's why we're seeing the wreckage that's happening in behind. That's why she's opened up this advantage over Abby Donnelly and, indeed, Nadia Badakleti, and it doesn't look like she's slowing down anytime soon. Well, that lead for the British squad is monstrous. 12 Britain over Spain's 40 and uh, Belgium 41 really tight for the minor places wow Spain 40 Belgium 41 France 43 a real ding dong there for the minor medals I just see unfortunately I see Sarah Lati has stepped off the course oh. she appears to be holding her hip and she's been assisted as she walks away so something has gone wrong she really looks strong in that first couple of laps but something amiss physically with Sarah Lati that's a great shame that's a classy, mind you is struggling a little bit. Interesting, isn't it? That step up in standard from the under 23s to the senior, jumping into the big pond, so to speak. Although, as you say, she hasn't had the best of build ups. Yeah, certainly. She made that, did brilliantly to make that world 5,000 meter final in Budapest, but finished in 16th and last place there. And she just came in and said, I apologize to everyone. I don't know what went wrong. She had no real excuse. She just felt terrible on the day. She bounced back well to finish fifth that World Road Championships but yeah perhaps not the very best version of Nadia Badakhetti we're seeing today whether it's the conditions or her fitness but she's still in the bronze medal position so so much to fight for her first ever European cross country silver bronze medal or any medal I should say on the line if she can hold it together two Belgians in the top ten they're having a really great day Chloe Herbier and Lisa Rooms 
Three times the Belgian champion at 5,000 rooms. She's eased her way into ninth place. And we're way past halfway now in this race. A little glance over the shoulder there for Grovdal just to see what sort of damage she's done. And she'll have got all the feedback she could have wanted. And that is that the gap has grown back to those behind her and importantly to the second place, so Abby Donnelly, who is, uh, I have to say, having a brilliant run. Ninth last year. Looks like she's heading for a medal here. Off to second at the UK trials. That's fantastic stuff from Donnelly. We just saw that shot of Badek Eddie there. And it's funny, you know, people talk about Elliot Kipchoge and his tell in terms of poker, in terms of when he's hurting. It tends to be when that half smile, half grimace, half snarl kind of comes across his face. And I think with Nadia Badek Eddie, it's when her mouth drops low and she's just sucking in oxygen. And I think we saw that on Nadia Badek Eddie's face after those first two laps. And that was right at the moment where she started to break, started to lose contact with Abby Donnelly and. Caroline Bjorkley Grovdal, but look at that stoic poker face focused in on the few meters of ground in front of her. Caroline Bjorkley Grovdal, I haven't seen her look behind recently. 15 seconds advantage, and then it's another 15 seconds back to Batacletti. And then look at that battle for bronze. Jess Judd and Fanula McCormack were both going to be looking up the road there, looking up the track at Nadia Batacletti, seeing her wobbling around in the mud a bit and thinking, I can have myself a bronze medal if I can just reel her in here over this next two laps. She's had quite a year, hasn't she? Grovdal got married earlier on this year, just in September, to a, a t Norwegian TV reporter, Magnus Grogsetara. I wonder what her honeymoon looks like if she's running like this. Double uh, threshold, perhaps? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Probably ran from the church to the uh, to the hotel where the honeymoon suite was waiting. Took off her wedding dress and went out for a run. That's incredible stuff. Donnelly, looking good still. There's no faltering there, even though she's been beaten in submission, so to speak, by Grovdal. I think she looked really good there coming past that camera. Abby Donnelly. And this has been a masterful run from her in a way because she's beating some big names and... Batacletti, they don't come much bigger than that. There's no trace of fatigue there on Caroline Bukley Grovdal's face. She's just head down as she goes up the hill. Two laps to run. She's two thirds of the way through and she will feel very confident about this at the moment. Batacletti is to her immense credit hanging on. I think that gap to Abby Donnelly might be constricting a little. We'll check the splits as they come through. And popping up on the bottom left of your screen, but Abby Donnelly still looks strong, doesn't look to be hurting too much. But Badakletti is definitely in a world of pain. But I think at this point, everyone is in a world of pain. Well, they are because you know what? Every one of them is isolated. You look at the, the top four, five, six, nobody's running with anybody else. I mean, Grob Donnelly is obviously on her own, Donnelly's on her own, Badakletti's on her own, Jessica Warner Judd for Great Britain is on her own. She's having a great run, the 28 year old, after fourth in the European. Uh, in the British trial, she's running in fourth place here. I mean, that is some run from Jessica Warner Judd. And then you can go further back, and you can see Herbie and Rooms and and, and the other uh, the other Brits. Is he Fry having a wonderful run too? Third in those UK trials. But it's almost an optical illusion. You know, when you watch Grovdal, she looks so untroubled, so unstressed. She just gets on with the job, and she's surely now. Heading for this hat trick. And I think if you look at her stride there in that slow mo as well, you notice that her feet don't, she doesn't really power off the ground. Her stride does closely resemble the motion of cross country skiing. The, the feet stay close to the ground, there's not much knee lift. And I think it's just a hunch, but I think on this kind of surface, that is a big advantage. When you're not a real power runner, not a plyometric runner, you don't lose all that wasted energy. You just shuffle along the surface, shuffle through the mud as she is. And she looks so, so impressive here doing what she's doing. And Jess Warner Judd would be so keen. She finished fourth in this race two years ago, led Britain to, led Britain to gold. But she's currently still sitting in fourth. 13 seconds to make up to Natia Badakleti to get amongst the medals individually. Can she do it? She'll be so desperate. Her career deserves a medal the way she's run in her class at European cross-country level. And that's right there within sight if she can produce something extra over this next 10 or 12 minutes. I haven't seen McCormack for a while. Is she still in fifth place? There's Batacletti in the background in third place. Great Britain still dominating that team race. Spain moving through well. Although we haven't seen Marta Perez, who was uh, perhaps their best runner here. She was uh, 
uh, ninth in the Tokyo Olympic 1500 meters. Maybe she's not enjoying the conditions here, the qualified doctor, 30 year old Spaniard. But do you know what? If you can avoid injuries, this was proven in, in recent years is that you can have a great running career up into your mid and late 30s. And you know, Grovdal here, she might be 33, but who's to say she hasn't got another few years at this? Absolutely. I mean, look at Sanula McCormack, six years down the line from Grovdal. 11 years down the line from her last title and she's still up there fighting for a bronze medal. Fanula McCormick is 19 seconds behind Bettacletti in that race for bronze with Jess Warner Judd 6 seconds ahead of McCormick and Jess Warner Judd is 13 seconds to close in on Bettacletti and Bettacletti probably will have been coming into this race thinking about maybe winning the gold and it's to her immense credit that with that seemingly disappearing into the distance she is digging in and fighting for all she's worth to hang on to that bronze and you never know with Abby Donnelly only 10 seconds up the track to her she might just have a shot at silver still for Nadia Badakleti on her senior debut at the Spar European Cross Country Championships Donnelly then in second place isolated has just got to manage this next few minutes Badakleti is she closing? I think maybe she has closed 20 metres or so over the last five minutes. The gap was about 70 or 80 metres. It's probably about 40 metres now between second and third. But the gap behind Batacleti, I think, is pretty sizable as we see uh, Grovdal. She's got 31 seconds now, Grovdal, to spare over Abby Donnelly. That is only opening. And then you see nine seconds Abby Donnelly has over Batacleti. So I think the race here is for silver, barring calamity. From Caroline Bjorkley Golf then, as it's been in the under 20 women's race, as it was in the under 23 women's race, we've been treated to a display of individual brilliance. Both men's races were final stretch, dust ups, kick finishes, but the women's races have gone very differently. But there's beauty in this as well because sometimes you just have to stand back and applaud. And I think right now, everyone here, the thousands of fans thronging the course here are applauding and cheering on the brilliance of Caroline Björkeli Grovda. There is Fanula McCormack. Fourth place now, Fanula McCormack. She has overtaken Jess Warner Judd. Jess Warner Judd has had a bad patch. Unless she's fallen, I'm not sure, but she slipped back very quickly there. Lost a lot of ground in a short amount of time. And Fanula McCormack, at the age of 39, six months on from her third, having her third child and seven days on from running a 226 marathon in Valencia, is up to fourth and only one spot shy of a medal. 21 seconds behind Nadia Badakheti. That strength of McCormack and the strength of Grobdal, whose last race, by the way, was a Norwegian record at the half marathon, is so important in these sorts of conditions. Grobdal running up fabulously with 67.34, broke the Norwegian record of Ingrid Christensen, which had stood since 1989 when she ran in the Copenhagen, she was sixth in the Copenhagen half marathon recently. Heads out on her final lap, and this is, well, frankly, an, an exhibition run from her. Negotiates that uh, turn for the final time, one of the muddiest sections on the course. Donnelly is being closed down by Bataclet, and you're dead right. That is the battle that we need to focus upon. Second and third, I think the gap behind Bataclet is pretty sizable yeah, isn't it's it? about 20 seconds 21 seconds at the last split Fanula McCormack had to close in so I think for Fanula McCormack perhaps unfortunately for all those in green and Fanula McCormack herself this could be the fifth time she finishes fourth in the senior race at the European Cross Country Championships and Batik I can tell you has overtaken Abby Donnelly as they come through under the banner here the finish line one lap to run Batik Letty has taken five meters out of Abby Donnelly and she is charging on ahead Abby Donnelly looks to be struggling, getting stuck in the mud a little, but no worries for Caroline Gerkley Gravel because she is in splendid isolation out front. And much like Innes Fitzgerald, much like Megan Keith, she will be able to start enjoying this very soon. Not quite yet, still has about 1,200 meters to run, but as we see, 41 seconds the advantage now over the second and third placers. And then Fanula McCormack has 27 seconds, so that gap has grown between third and fourth. It looks like it will be a fifth, fourth place finish for Fanula. So the uh, 1500 meter laps for Grovdal have been 533, 536, 536. She's on a final lap now, but it just uh, underlines how fast the athlete was going in the previous under 23 race because it was uh, 526 
Megan Keith was churning out 5.26 laps and uh, Grovdahl is running 5.36 laps. I think I said that it would have been great to see Megan Keith in the senior race. How would she get on? Of course, they're running longer here. They're running 9K. But nonetheless, the quality of her run was stupendous. And Grovdahl here doing more than enough to dominate this race. Bata Kleti, you know what? She's looked pretty rough over at various times in the last 15 minutes or so. She has rallied wonderfully. Brilliant from her. Brilliantly, uh, truly brilliantly. The sign of a champion athlete and a class athlete. And more than anything, a courageous athlete when things aren't going to plan in terms of it. Plan A at least, she has dug in, kicked in hard and fought for all she's worth to get that silver medal because I don't think she was going to put it up to Grovdale today. At some point in the future, I have no doubt Nadia Badakleti will be on the top of a podium at the Senior Women's European Cross Country, but it's not going to be today. In the team race, Great Britain lead with 19 points from France on 37, Spain on 38, Belgium on 39. That battle for the minor medals, France, Spain, Belgium, separated by two points, is absolutely massive. And one of those three is going to come away without a team medal. Great Britain surely now can't be caught for the gold. Grovdal can't be caught for her gold either. Her third successive title here. And a hat-trick is special in any sport. You know, it's so competitive. And that consistency, staying uninjured, staying focused, absolutely brilliant. Her 10th individual medal team at these championships. And only two athletes in the history, men or women's, have won the senior title three times. They are Sergei Lebed of Ukraine and Yasmin Chan of Turkey, who have won two individual senior titles. And Caroline Björkeli Gravdal is about to complete the hat-trick and make that three the Norwegian star. There was no Jakob Ingebrigtsen here this year. So they did the double last year in Italy, but this time it is going to be Caroline Björkeli Gravdal carrying the Norwegian colours to glory with what is an exhibition of a display. Yeah, that downhill section, that's about the nicest section of the course, actually, because it's downhill, a right-hand curve on good ground, good going. And uh, you can really push hard there and enjoy that downhill momentum. Grovdal of anything has accelerated. I'll bet you this final 1500 meter lap will have been the quickest of her four. Looking very, very comfortable indeed. And she's got 49 seconds now to spare over Nadia Badakleti in second, who in turn is six seconds clear of Abby Donnelly, who looks to be headed for bronze, unless something unforeseen happens there. But what a performance this is! It's been a true display. As we see, that gap looks to be growing. Nadia Badakleti now. This is kind of her wheelhouse inside this last kilometre. She will be kicking in hard, Nadia Badakleti. But a brilliant run from Abby Donnelly. That's going to be such a well-deserved bronze medal. And in the background there, you see Fanula McCormack on her way to fourth. Not quite enough for a medal today. But Fanula McCormack with 18 appearances at the European Cross Country. That's a record for a female athlete. It's only one behind Ukraine's Sergei Lebed. And we'd expect her, I'm sure, to come back next year at the age of 40, given she's still in contention for medals at the age of 39. But Caroline Björkley gravdell she can now see the finish. Every step she takes in this direction will be a step that takes her closer towards the line and towards her third senior European cross-country title. From the gun, she made it tough, and she is tough. She is tough, she is classy, she's courageous, she is already celebrating, and she should luxuriate in this feeling because at the age of 33 Caroline Björkley Grobdal is going to join the greats of not just the European Cross Country Championships but the greats of European distance running Norway is back on top and Caroline Björkley Grobdal with an exhibition a masterclass here in Brussels yeah as if she needed to write another line on the most astonishing CV but she has, and in dramatic style, a truly dominant run. 33-40, Batakleti. Well, I'll tell you what, her first effort in the senior ranks, Carl, and she's uh, gone really well here. So battled through a bad patch in the middle of the race to come through for this silver. And uh, how much ground has she opened up on Abby Donnelly, who's suffered under this last lap or two, to uh, secure this silver a little way back underlines the dominance of Grovdal, but it also underlines what a brilliant, characterful silver that is for the Italian. Absolutely, and Abby Donnelly, I'm sure, will be overjoyed. Yes, it looked like silver for a lot of that race, but her first medal at the European Cross Country Championships will leave her joyous on the way home. Ninth last year, third this year, and a very welcome piece of excess baggage. And the 
flight back to Britain for Abby Donnelly. Her first international medal to Abby Donnelly. She's run many times in the uh, age group rankings and uh, performed really well, but never got onto the roster. 34-42. Finishes, what, 17 seconds down on Batacletti. And that is perhaps the run of the day. Yeah, astonishing stuff there from all of them really but Fanula McCormick coming in there in fourth 18 seconds off a medal I don't think anyone probably not Fanula herself in any way expected to get that close on this day what could she have done if she was actually training for this race you'd, have, you'd wonder but again age no barrier 39 running close to her best six just, months on from giving birth just won a jump fabulous fifth place there two Brits in the first five rooms what a run from uh, Lisa Rooms, the three times Belgian champion at 5,000, was only third in the Belgian cross country last month, but uh, finishes in sixth place in the European Championships. Yeah, the Brits with Abby Donnelly in third, Jess Warner Judd in fifth, and Izzy Fry is going to be in tenth, completing their scoring at 18, and it's going to be between the Belgian, the French, and the Spanish, and it is so close as we wait for all these scores to be tabulated. Indeed, it is Belgium who've got up with those brilliant two runs there in the top ten. They've got up for a silver, a brilliant silver for the hosts. Every good championships needs a good medal for the hosts. And Belgium deliver senior team silver, and it might get even better. Who knows in the men's race? 37 points take the silver. Oh, sorry, no, it is Spain. Those were very provisional results. Never count your chickens. Don't you love it? Cross-country runners are a different breed. Most people think it would be mad as a hatter to lie down voluntarily in the mud, but Patrick Cletty gave her all. By the way, that, is, that team goes to Great Britain by quite some margins. Their seventh gold of the day, including individuals. It's been a, another good day for those uh, British vests and tracksuits. And I can now confirm all the main contenders are in with their top three, and it is Spain who takes silver on 37 points, ahead of Belgium on 38. Just one point in turn ahead of France on 39 so we always go on about every second every place counting and never more in evidence there the difference between second and fourth between Spain and France just two points with Belgium splitting the difference with a well-earned bronze medal Great Britain though once again dominant 18 points you don't often see it as tight as that do you 37, 38, 39 second, third, fourth wow Belgium's first medal of the day, by the way. Brilliant running. And uh, Herbie and Rooms ran out of their skin. See official confirmation there of the team standings. First medal of the day for Belgium, but will it be their last? Because hopes are very high. I can assure you no one who came out to Lakeland Park here today is going to be leaving. They're all going to be looking towards Isaac Kimeli and the Belgian men's team. It's not just a one-man band. They have two very strong backups in there as well. We're just looking at, around the course out of our commentary booth here in the finishing straight. It is lined by people the whole way round on the outer on the outer bank or outer side of the course, so to speak. The crowds here are quite magnificent. Yeah, the really lovely for these athletes to be able to run through a tunnel of people like this in, in so much of the course. They love their cross country in Belgium. And it's very much in evidence throughout the day here. Brilliant support. Third time the Europeans have been held here, and I've no doubt they'll be back for a fourth before too long. Well, just the senior men's race to come. You can see the start list going across your screen. We're trying to catch up as quickly as we can, and flipping volumes of paper around here on our commentary booth. Uh, Call me. Uh, but, uh, yep, we are ready for the men's race, the seventh race of the day, the final race of the day. It is nine kilometers once again, the same as the women. Six laps of 1,500 meters. Six to run, three to score in this race. Last year's champion, of course, was Jakob Ingebrigtsen, running uh, pretty comfortably from Britain's Emil Keres and Isaac Kimeli of Belgium. Well, Ingebrigtsen is injured. He pulled out a couple of weeks back. Keres is not here. He's uh, concentrating on marathon these days and for the, main, for the most part. And Isaac Kimeli is here, the Belgian, who took bronze 12 months ago, perhaps starts as one of the uh, main race favourites. He was uh, in... in buoyant mood yesterday at his press conference but uh, we'll get those uh, main names up for you any second as we see the men's race preparing they were due underway at
quarter past the hour, so about eight minutes ago, but that matters not. There is that uh, field.